Let's head to the campaign trail now. Political leaders are making their final push for votes as the election campaign hurtles towards an end with an opinion poll last night putting National uh, a wee way ahead but most, both main parties saying they believe it's neck and neck. Politicians are doing everything they can to push their message out to voters. Benedict Collins has more from the second to last day of the campaign trail. We can as a country be better. We will be better. So together, let's do this. Jacinda Ardern got a rousing reception at Canterbury University today as she urged students to make sure they vote. Labour's leader says time is running out. There is a sense of urgency now. My message to New Zealanders would be uh, that we cannot wait another three years for the change we need to deliver better housing, better health care and cleaner rivers. And how are you, how are you holding up? It's been a pretty rigorous campaign. Yeah, ex exceptionally well, I think, for someone that doesn't drink coffee. I feel great. I've enjoyed every moment of it. Not one coffee the whole campaign? No. Nationals leader Bill English left Wellington this morning on his campaign bus for a final two-day push as he makes his way to Auckland for election night. But before he departed, he broke with convention and cast his early vote alongside his wife Mary and Wellington Central candidate Nicola Willis. Unsurprisingly, confirming after exiting the polling booth that he'd given two ticks to National. The bus made stops in Lower Hutt and Paraparaumu for Mr English to mingle with voters. I do remember, I recognise your place, we used to come into work the old time. Yeah, yeah. That's right, here's the wee one. He's great. All yeah, the best happy. day. Of course. Yeah, well, thank you very much. But Mr English is still coming to grips with the publicity an election campaign brings. Well, the face on the bus, it's my face. <laughs> and I've just, only just got used to looking at it that size. <laughs> but he says it's all worth it. The plan we have for New Zealand is worth fighting for. It's worth all the effort, uh, shaking every hand, uh, getting up early, going to bed late. And uh, we want voters to be, you know, to see that, how important it is for New Zealand that they make this choice. The Green leader James Shaw went to a union meeting in Monaco today before visiting Auckland University. At the voting booth at the university, the line stretched down the corridors and stairs. James Shaw was encouraging everyone he could to get involved. You've voted as well? Yeah. Have you voted? Yes. So Have you voted? I haven't voted, but I'm voting today. Right. Yeah. And are you, are you just sort of holding off on the line as well, are you? Yeah, well, I'm voting with my mum. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. She's Labour, but I'm trying to push her towards Greens. <laughs> just, t just tell her that every vote for the Greens adds to the Labour total. That's what I've been saying every time. Yeah, but I'm voting Greens. But he says he's met a lot of voters who are getting confused about MMP. It is voter confusion. So, and it's been one of the big challenges of the last couple of weeks for us uh, has been overcoming that because there are so many people who are core Green voters, committed Green voters, some of whom have voted Green two or three times, who have thought mistakenly that a vote for the Greens takes away from Labour's vote rather than adds to it. Winston Peters was also in Auckland, holding a public rally on the waterfront this afternoon. I'd like to uh, ask you all to put your hands together for a big welcome for the uh, right honourable Winston Peters. <laughs> Mr Peters outlined how he says the city will benefit from New Zealand First's policy to shift Auckland's port to North Port near Whangarei or a special economic zone, would also be created. It works abroad and it'll work here. As port functions are transferred to Northport, progressively return 77 hectares of Auckland's iconic harbour side back to the people of Auckland. It is the common sense thing to do. Well, look, we're here today in Remuera outside a state house that was blown out uh, by P. Cooks in February. Absolutely nothing's happened. The neighbour's not particularly happy about it. Uh, but this blowing out P. Across town, the Act leader, David Seymour, was out in his Epsom electorate, highlighting Auckland's housing crisis. But with the election so close, we asked him to say which party's Act would work with in any post-election deal. Labour? Out. Greens? Definitely out. New Zealand first? Uh, if absolutely necessary, but for the country, for national and for ACT, it would be better if we had the numbers without New Zealand first. But you're just being realistic about the fact that it, that's what it might come down to on the current numbers. So yeah, and I've, I've said, look, if it means keeping the left out, keeping taxes low, uh, would we take one for the team? Uh, yes, we would. Back on housing, Mr Seymour says ACT would demand that any government it's part of, after the election, declare a state of housing emergency in Auckland. For Checkpoint, Benedict Collins.